So I just want to uh, start by this data set. So again, just load it in, drag it in. In this case, we're not going to do any pre-processing. We're just going to just drag it in and say OK. And what we should get is that view that is almost familiar to us now. But what we can look at now is something to do with the numbers here, uh, because it's important. Uh, so this number here, 4,831, and there are 200,000 edges, OK? So it's a kind of different scale from what we've just been looking at, where we had hundreds of edges and hundreds of nodes, or just over 100 nodes. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that if that figure reads half a million, and this figure means 10 million, it's not going to work. <laughs> it means that you've just loaded in something that is a vast network, and it'll just fall over. Okay? So be conscious of this number, because when you go load up a data set the first time, lots of weird stuff can happen. Um, and actually, I had somebody phone me up the other day, and he, he was going, I've loaded in the data set, and it's, it's just huge. Um, and it, it just keeps falling over. And it was quite a big data set, and I was going, well, it shouldn't really give that kind of numbers. What it was, there was really one bad, he'd just downloaded this sample, and it turned out to be there was one bad sample in this data set. And that meant that everything was correlated around that one big sample. So if you have, you know, 100 samples, and there's one one that's really big and nasty, and it's a big outlier, then everything is correlated around the fact that it's very high in that sample. So weird things can happen between this. So just be conscious of this. So going back to this whole idea of setting this correlation value, some point towards the inflection. Now I say this is a kind of filtered data set already. Um, so I'm going to set this at 0 0.9 and say OK. Now you'll notice that it's taking a little bit longer to load in the data. It took a little bit longer to load things in, and we're getting a graph like this. Now, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to reload this in a second. But I'm going to you notice that in a lot of gene expression data, you'll notice that you get a lot of this stuff, potentially, shrapnel. So this is where you get a pet. Usually, a lot of these are probes, two probes for the same gene. They're correlated to each other, but they're just not correlated to anything else. And so you get this. And so what are you going to do with this small stuff? Well, what we can do is just get rid of it before we load it in. So if we go to this uh, point here, at the bottom of this window, which is called Layout, I'm going to set that to 10, let's say. Okay. So that means that any component of the graph, which is less than 10 nodes, will not appear in the graph itself. It will be filtered out before we load it in. Okay. So we, don't, we won't be troubled by all this small stuff. It doesn't matter that it's there, but it's a bit unsightly. The other thing I'm going to try and do, now, if we just look at this graph here, it looks like a big hairball of nastiness, doesn't it, really? It doesn't look like it's got much structure. I'll just show that it does have structure, but it just isn't obvious. So I'm going to disable the nodes here. Again, just looking at edges. Sometimes the nodes, the wood gets you can see that actually that does have structure, yeah? So you can see here, we've got a, a clique of nodes here, we've got a structure here, we've got a big mass here. So even though you can't see, it is there. Now this, again, slightly is a layout problem. So we recently introduced a new layout algorithm called FM3. Okay. Now this is a lot better. At, well, yeah, we'll come to that now. Now, I'm going to make it medium quality. I'm going to make it actually low quality, low speed. So this is one of these springed bended engines, but it actually works far better at laying out big structures. So you'll see the difference in a moment. So I'll say, OK, I've set these two like this. Uh, I'll put my nodes back on so that we can see them. And I'm going to open this up again. OK. We've calculated the correlation matrix. So when you calculate that correlation matrix, you'll find a file on your desktop which says whatever the file name is, .pearson. That's the matrix that's already calculated. So once you've done it once, you don't do it, need to do it again. So pressing this again. Now this is a multi-level layout. OK. Right. So does that make sense? So what we've done, so that graph is again the same as the graph we loaded first. 
but now we've put another layout algorithm which forces things further apart. So this layout algorithm is a lot better at revealing structure here. And the other thing I'm going to do now is by the time you get to graphs of this size, seeing colored edges is probably not that useful. Uh, so I'm just going to make it slightly prettier. I'm going to make the edges thinner. And I'm going to change the color of those edges to a gray. <coughs> Said OK. OK. Yeah, so I just want to look at the structure. So what we can see, so this is a time course of experiments, OK? So this is a, a set of cells which have been starved. Then we've added back the serum. There's a couple of control samples here which are unsynchronized cells. And this is the transcriptomic graph that you see of the events. And so what I want to try and show you in a, this relatively simple data set, it's not simple, <laughs> the answer isn't simple, but the actual graph is relatively simple, is, is what this all means. So we go to the next mode here that we mentioned before, which is clustering. I'm going to go back to my favorite 2.2. Um, this, again, this is up to you, but I, I like 2.2 because we worked out it many years ago. And we'll run that clustering algorithm. OK. So now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so that I, so again, clusters of one, what do you do with them? Yeah. Why don't we just get rid of them? Uh, so I'm going to make it six. So I'm not interested in any cluster that's smaller than six. So let's run that algorithm again. And you can see now how your graph has got all these blue nodes around it. Okay. So blue means that, that actually this is the color for no class. So remember we grouped nodes into classes based on their clustering. So when we say, tell me, don't put anything into that there's in a cluster less than six, then what we're putting them into is a group called no class. Okay. So the nice thing is that once you've got graphs partitioned this way, we can select a node, okay, and then we can say control alt s. Control alt s is the command for selecting everything with that same class. So if you press control alt, if you click on a blue node and then say control alt s, you will have selected everything which is similar. And once you've selected it, we can do, well, I'm going to now say control h, which is to hide it. Okay? So I've just hidden away all that small stuff. Okay, so we've left the main things, we've mef left the big clusters. We haven't got rid of those small clusters, we've just basically hidden them for view. We could get rid of them, but we're not going to for this point of view. Okay, so we can see now even more of the structure that we have within this data, and you can see more of the bigger clusters. So what you tend to find is when you cluster data, you'll get a sm relatively small number of big clusters, and then it goes down and you'll end up with lots and lots of small clusters. Now, the reality is that, that things that are correlated almost by chance tend to be in this hair <laughs> around the edge. So we've just given the graph a haircut. We've removed the small stuff. That's not saying that it's not all interesting. I'm just saying for now, we're just going to remove it. OK, so now we want to look at what this all means. So I've just put this data in. I don't know much about the data. This is the graph that I get. I want to understand what it is. Why are these groups of genes clustering? As I mentioned, they may be clustering because of biological reasons, or there may be other reasons why they're grouped. But we want to be able to see why that is. So going back to this uh, window here, so pressing that or Control C, yeah, we'll get back to this window here. And now when we, we act, look at, uh, at the classes, we not only know what the identity of the nodes is, we know that those nodes represent data, and we're going to be able to look at that data itself. So if I say find by class and select one, what we plot in this window here, so nice simple n names, okay, T0, 2, so these are the controls, so these are the unsynchronized cells, this is experiment one, and 0, 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 11, 24, and then this is another experiment where we actually took six-hour time points. We have two controls here, 
we have then the experiments which are 0 hours, 6 hours, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. Okay? So it's two experiments put together. We've merged the data together and basically made this one graph. Now, it's not... Can you see that okay from there? Okay. So another way of... So each line here in this bar represents a node in that cluster. Okay? And the data that comes from that node in that cluster. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to see the pattern uh, if we actually uh, scaling selection okay so I've now just selected the mean of that cluster point is you can see that the genes in this cluster basically start off expression quite low in the controls and in the zero hours and at about six to eight hours, you're seeing these genes increase, okay? Now, in the second experiment here, they also start off low, and this is six hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours, and they go down, okay? So that's the general characteristic, that's the mean profile of the genes in that cluster. So these are things which are dynamically regulated, and actually, what you can see in this here, so this is the list of those genes, and, well, let me, so we put other information in here. So we say view all class sets. Now, <laughs> there's a huge number of class sets here. I'm just going to say choose columns to hide. So I'll deselect all. And what I'll just go for is the description. And let's say phase. Okay. So, and whether they're a transcription factor. Okay. So I've now just selected out of all the information that I, I put in there, I've selected a few characteristics that I want to look at. And what I've obviously now showing here is not only the symbol, but actually the name. So obviously we, we generally feel of more names. Now what you'll see here is cycling A2, cycling B1, cycling B2, cycling F. Okay, so these are all cyclins which are upregulated during this. Cell division cycles, cycles, centromere proteins, and you only have to go down this list to see a lovely big list of what are kinesin families. So these are all genes which are upregulated during cell cycle, which are required by the cell to undergo division.